Hi, I'm Isaac Medina, the Electric Vehicle Customer Service Representative for AZ Bus Sales. Today you will be learning about the Electric Bluebird Transit Bus. After today's training, you will have the knowledge on how to maintain, operate, and safely interact with your bus. All high voltage components are identified by either a high voltage symbol or orange coloring. This meets the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. No high voltage wires can be found inside of cab. The Bluebird bus was built with safety as their number one concern. All high voltage components are powered and serviced by Cummins. MSDs, also known as the Master Service Disconnect. There are two MSDs located on the right hand side of frame rail. These are only to be removed in case of an emergency or work being performed to the high voltage system. AZ Bus Sales recommends school districts to acquire a high voltage certificate for their employees with leadership roles in transportation. This will give the knowledge to the employee on how to handle an incident. The Bluebird Bus has three charging capabilities, level two, level 3, and V2G. Level 2 charging uses industry standard J1722 connector. On a level 2 charge, it will take 8 to 10 hours to charge from 0 to 100. Level 3 charging, also known as DC fast charge. This type of charging will use a CCS1 connector. With a DC charger, it will take 3 to 4 hours to charge from 0 to 100. V2G, also known as vehicle to grid. V2G is a communication between bus and power grid. V2G has two capabilities. One is returning electricity to the grid. Two is throttling the charging rate back during peak hours to save money for the school district. Tesla charging stations are non-compatible. Ambient temperature will slow down the charging. When it is below 65 degrees Fahrenheit, the amperage is mostly used for warming up the batteries, which slows down the charging process. When the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the charging is also slowed down to prevent overheating the batteries. Before charging, verify charging cord and connector have no signs of damage. Verify port on bus as well as connector from charging station are free of debris. Once you have verified all connections are good, go ahead and connect bus to charging station. While the vehicle is charging, you will not be able to enable the vehicle, but you can turn on all your accessories. This is very important while performing your pre-trip. When bus is connected to the charger, the 12 volt is also being charged. The electric Bluebird was not re-engineered. As you can see, the driver's cockpit remains the same with some minor changes. This helps the driver feel more at home when operating the Bluebird Electric. AZ Bus Sales highly recommends to perform your pre-trip while the bus remains connected to the charging station. Doing so will preserve the state of charge of the vehicle by utilizing power from the grid and not the bus. Performing the pre-trip while the bus is unplugged will lower the state of charge before even leaving the yard. This can have a negative effect on your route. The first step of your pre-trip is to perform your light check. All this can be performed while the bus is charging. Simply turn the key to the ignition position and all body components will be active. Second will be to the outside inspection. Unplug charger. Open the rear access door. Visually inspect fluid levels to coolant and power steering. Inspect for coolant and hydraulic leaks. Verify all wiring is secure. Go ahead and close your door. Twelve volt battery. Open the battery compartment door. Pull the battery tray out. 
check all connections for tightenings and signs of corrosion. Verify no leaks coming from battery. Verify priority start module has an illuminated green light. Push the battery tray back in. And close your battery compartment door. Driver side rear. Open side access door. Visually inspect the TMS, also known as a thermal management system. Inspect for coolant leaks. Inspect all wiring is secure. Close the side access door. The last step of your pre-trip should be the air brake test. In order to complete inspection, the vehicle must be unplugged and enabled. Remember, the vehicle won't enable while plugged in to the charging station. Enabling the vehicle. The charger must be disconnected. Turn the key to the ignition position. The words initialization complete will display on your LCD screen. Now turn the key to the start position, holding for one second and letting go. Remember, there is no starter, no cranking or noise will happen. The bus is now enabled. There are two ways to tell when the vehicle is enabled. One is the green bus icon on the top right corner of cluster. Second is the words vehicle enabled on the LCD screen. Once the vehicle has been enabled, there are three interlocks that must be met before selecting drive or reverse. One is the seatbelt must always be buckled. Second is the entry door must be closed at all times. And third is the park brake must be released. Once all three interlocks have been met, you may now select drive or reverse. If the seatbelt is disengaged while in drive or reverse, a set park brake message will display on your cluster. Simply re-engage seatbelt and warning will disappear. If the entry door is open while in drive or reverse and traveling below three miles an hour, the vehicle will lose acceleration. If traveling above three miles an hour, the vehicle will wait until traveling below three miles an hour to disengage your ability to accelerate. If the entry door malfunctions and you are unable to close the door, the vehicle is equipped with an interlock override switch. Simply push the switch in order to bypass the entry door and put the vehicle into drive. There is no override for the seatbelt. The seatbelt must always be engaged. Once the vehicle is put into drive, a noise will generate from in front of the vehicle. This noise will warn pedestrians the vehicle is in motion. The noise generator will turn off when traveling above 20 miles an hour. When driving the electric Bluebird, there is one major procedure that must be implemented to your driving habits, and that is called coasting. Coasting is when you release the accelerator pedal and coast to a stop. Minimum braking should be used when performing coasting correctly, unless in case of an abrupt braking situation. When releasing the accelerator pedal, the vehicle automatically goes into what is called regenerative braking. Regenerative braking is when the drive motor acts as a generator and puts energy back into the batteries. Regenerative braking acts as a retarder and slows down the vehicle. There is no on or off switch for this feature. The cluster has been updated with what is called an efficiency gauge. Every time the regenerative braking is active, the needle moves into the blue and when pressing on the accelerator pedal, the needle moves back into the yellow. If coasting is not implemented and regenerative braking is not used to its full potential, there will be a negative effect to the range of the vehicle. The following procedures to assist the driver with rollbacks when stopping on the incline. All steps must be followed by driver for feature to be activated. Failure to perform all steps will cause the vehicle to roll back freely. First step is the bus must be at a complete stop. Hold the brake pedal for three seconds. After the three seconds, release the brake pedal rapidly. The motor will then hold the bus in its position for five seconds. After five seconds, the motor will release and the bus will roll back if the accelerator pedal has not been pressed. If the brake pedal is released gradually, the vehicle will then start to roll back, which overrides the zero mile an hour condition and the hill assist will not become active. 
If stopped at an above normal grade, the vehicle will roll back. To have no rollback, the driver will need to utilize both feet, one on the brake pedal and the other pressing on the accelerator during takeoff. Do not power brake or try to feather accelerator. This will cause the motor to overheat and deactivate acceleration until motor cools down. What to do in case of an accident? Unload children off the bus? Advise EMT, police, and or fire department the location of the MSDs. Follow your school district's accident policy. The Bluebird Electric is a low maintenance vehicle, which will save time and money for the school district. One of the components to service is the air compressor. The air compressor requires an oil change the first 6,000 miles or six months, whichever comes first. From there, it would be once a year or every 18,000 miles, whichever one comes first. The compressor requires 3.2 quarts of 1540 motor oil. The air filter is just removed, washed, air dried, and then reinstalled. Service intervals for the cooling system. There's 18 gallons of coolant flowing throughout the entire bus. The coolant is used to keep the batteries and motor cool and warm. The coolant is also used for the in-cab heat. The bus utilizes Long Life 50-50 mix, which should be checked once a year or every 20,000 miles. Every five years or 150,000 miles, the system must be drained and refilled. In case of a coolant leak, please contact AZ Bus Sales right away. The power steering system is controlled by an electric high voltage pump. The pump utilizes five quarts of Dexron 3, which requires an inspection every 12 months or 20,000 miles. There is a dipstick located on the cap of reservoir. The 12 volt battery is the most important component of the electric vehicle. Nothing works without it. It is really important to maintain in good working condition and should be implemented to the school district's 45 day inspection. It requires to verify all connections are secured and free of corrosion. Anything below 11.5 volts and the vehicle will not enable. Jumping the 12 volt is perfectly safe to do so. If the bus is going to sit for more than three days without being utilized, the bus must be put into sleep mode. There are two steps to perform in order to put the bus into sleep mode. One is to remove the bus from the charger, and second is to turn the 12 volt switch off. It is highly recommended for this procedure to be implemented when not utilizing the bus for more than three days. Failure to do so can drain the 12 volt battery and cause premature failure. That concludes today's training. I hope you have learned something today and feel more comfortable with the EV product. Thanks again for allowing AZ Bus to solve your transportation needs. We look forward to a greener future together.